بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم <coughs> Brothers and sisters, my friends from the East London Mosque and the London Muslim Centers to your winter conference May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you I'm so sorry I couldn't be there with you I pray to Allah the Almighty that all of you are safe um, and hopefully one day soon we be, I'll be able to come to visit you again I just want to speak to you um, today for, for a few moments. I'm speaking from my office in Brooklyn. Soon there'll be a lot of people here, so I'm going to talk to you um, briefly um, about the topic of being tested and uh, the wisdom of Allah the Almighty testing us. In fact, we're always being tested. Um, so I'm going to take a few moments and give you some things to think about. Um... Uh, first of all, you you want to know the very reason we were created. And for us as Muslims, we're going to go to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad um, for explanations of everything. Allah said, I've not created the, the jinn um, and the humans except to worship me. And you notice that's what's not included in that are creatures of Allah called angels. And Allah didn't mention that he created the angels to worship him, but that's exactly what they do. But angels are different. Uh, they can't disobey Allah. But you and I as humans can. Let me tell you something that happened 1400 years ago that caught my attention. A man, and in this hadith, we don't know the identity of the man, a man, he said to the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam, Ya khayru bariya, ya khayru bariya, O oh, the best of creation. I was intrigued by that statement, and I wanted to see the response of our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. When the man said, O oh, best of creation. You know what the Prophet said? That's Ibrahim. That's Ibrahim. And although I can make a compelling argument, that the Prophet والسلام, is indeed the best of creation. Uh, so I'm not going to um I'm not gonna dispute what, what my Prophet said. Um but I want to tell you why I think the Prophet said that Ibrahim. First of all, he said, I am the da'wah to Abi Ibrahim. I am the answer of the supplication of the da'wah of the dua of my of my father Ibrahim. So Ibrahim alayhi salat wasalam um, is the father of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And the Prophet came to the lineage of Ibrahim through Ismail. He came to that lin lineage. So he's, he's given respect to his father. But it's more than that. Um, consider this, what the Prophet said, alayhi salat wa salam. He said, one prayer in my masjid is better than 1,000 prayers in any other masjid. Il al-masjid al-haram. Except Masjid Haram. It's Masjid Haram. This is the house that Ibrahim built. And he said one prayer in Masjid Al Haram is better than 100,000 prayers than in, in any other Masjid. Consider this. I've traveled all over the world, Alhamdulillah. I've traveled all over America. And whenever I go to a city, the first thing I ask is which, what is the direction of the Qibla? The Qibla is that Masjid Haram that Ibrahim built, alayhi salat wa salam. Um, as you know, Allah mentioned Quran, Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut. Every soul shall taste of death. And you know, you're going to die. And the Prophet, the peace and blessing be upon him, said that we will all be resurrected. But we'll be resurrected naked. And the first one to be dressed on Yom al Qiyamah is Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam. Consider this. Um, you know, off time in the Quran, Allah is speaking directly to the Prophet. Sometimes he's speaking to all the believers, sometimes he's he's speaking to people of the book. Um and and I'm I'm always intrigued whenever Allah is speaking directly to the Prophet, especially when he tells them what to say. And I've counted over 360 something times where Allah used the word, the verb, qala, in fitlu amr, commandment, kul, 
to one person, that is to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. So listen to what Allah says in the Quran. Qalu, kunu hudan al nasara tahtadu. Be Jews or Christians if you're going to be directed aright. And Allah says, Bal, kul, bal, millata Ibrahim halifa wa makana min al mushrikin. No, no. The religion of Ibrahim. And indeed, all throughout the Quran, Allah is telling the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, to follow the religion of Abraham. So Abraham is, is, really, is really special. And I found the verse in the Quran, there are many verses that make him special. Like Allah did take Abraham as a friend. And by the way, the Quran says, Allah said in the Quran, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ That the Qur'an, this revelation, is a confirmation of the scripture that came before it. And indeed, almost the same word, Allah did take Abraham as a friend. وَتَقْلُ اللَّهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلٍ It doesn't just mean a friend, it means an intimate companion. Intimate. So, Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam is special. But I, I found a verse in the Quran that may give us some insight why he's so special. And when we tested Ibrahim with tests, he passed it. Abraham passed every test. And when you studied the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sirah of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, studied the narrations, you find um, all the tests that Abraham, Abraham had, you know some of them. Um, let me give you one that maybe you haven't thought about too much. <clears throat> there was an intimate conversation that Abraham had, alayhi salat wa salam, with his wife Sarah. And listen to what he said. Yeah, Sarah. لَيْسَ عَلَى وَجِي أَدِّي مُؤْمِنْ غَيْرِ وَغَيْرُكِ O Sarah, there is not one believer on the face of the earth other than you and me. Think about it. We have now uh, 1,900,000,000 Muslims around the world. In your city, in London, you know better than me how many Muslims in London, how many Muslims in Europe, how many Muslims in uh, Africa. One third of the Muslim ummah live in non-Muslim countries. Where do you find them? You find them in America. You find them in Europe. You find them in Asia. You find them in Africa. You find them all over the world. 1,900,000,000 Muslims, but during the time of Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam, at one point, it was just him and his wife, Hagar. You know the commandment. It's both in the Quran, it's in the, in the uh, scripture before, of Ibrahim's willingness to sacrifice his son, Ismail, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know about the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, Ibrahim leaving his wife, Hagar, and his son, uh, Ismail, baby, newborn baby, leaving them in the desert when there was nothing, no food, no no people. And he left them with uh, um, some dates and a container of, of, of water. So he was, he was tested. And um, I learned, you are, as a result of your test, consider this. You may have heard about it maybe two years ago. A 71-year-old man in Kansas City went into a bank and he gave the teller a note saying, I have a gun, put money in the bag. And the teller put about $3,000 in the bag. And this 71-year-old man, instead of walking out of the bank, he goes to the lobby of the bank and he sits down. Within minutes, the police come. And you could have anticipated they would come because the precinct was one half a block from the bank. So when the police came, the 71-year-old man handed him the bag and said, I'm the one you're looking for. And they searched him. There was no gun. And they arrested him. So now he's standing in front of the judge. And the judge said, what is this? This is no robbery. There was no gun. Why did you do it? You know what that man said? He said, Your Honor, I would rather go to jail 
and spend one more night with my wife. You may think that's funny. <laughs> it is. You know, um, whenever a judge makes a judgment and he puts out a, a, um, a punishment, the punishment should be suitable for the crime. So this was a smart judge, and that judge gave that 71-year-old man six months home confinement. <laughs> for the record, this man reconciled with his wife. You know why he did it, really? He was suffering from depression. And you never know, brothers and sisters, what, what people are going through. So that man was tested. And we all tested. Blessed be in him in whose hand is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. He created death and life to test us. Who's best in conduct? This is Allah. This is Allah testing us to see who is best in conduct. This is what he does. Um, you know, all throughout the Quran, you will see people are always being tested. You are as a result of your tests. I remember in 12, 12, I was in um, London at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm listening to Michelle Obama giving a speech. She gave a very powerful speech, and she said something that I'll never forget. She said, the office of the president doesn't change who you are. It reveals who you are. Likewise, tests reveal who you are. Some young man got arrested and he was in jail and he said, that's not who I am. That's exactly who you are. What you did, you were tested, you failed the test, and that's exactly who you are. And Allah, the Almighty, is going to test us every day. You know, um... I love graduations. I really do. I cry at graduations, most graduations. And my daughter graduated from Medgar Evers College. And I'll, I'll never forget, you know, the master of ceremonies uh, called every graduate. And they said, so-and-so graduated cum laude. Cum laude is Latin, which means with, with distinction, with honor. So-and-so graduated, magna cum laude. Cum laude means with great distinction. So-and-so graduated, summa cum laude. So-and-so graduated with the highest, the greatest of honor and distinction. So people, they test. Did they get an A? Did they get a B? Did they get a C? Did they get the gold medal? Did they get the bronze medal? Did they get the silver medal? People always being tested. Let me tell you something, and you think about this, um, uh, brothers and sisters. I, I mentioned about um, angels, and Allah mentioned that He's not created humans and jinn except to worship Him. You know, I have a theory. I can't prove it, but I'm almost sure about it. When you think about shaitan, Shaitan wasn't born Shaitan. He wasn't born a devil. In fact, just reading between the lines, he was a jinn. According to the Quran, he was a jinn. And reading between the lines, he was a special jinn. Close. Maybe even hung out with the angels. You know, and, and he was tested by Allah. And Allah ordered him to bow down to, to Adam. Think about Adam, right? You as you and I, if you read the um both if you read the Torah, the gospel, Injil, and the Quran, all of them tell us the identity of the first person, the first human being, Adam. All three of them say Adam. We believe in it because we believe as a Muslim, we believe in and the, the angels, we believe in the books, we believe in uh, the, the revelation, 
in the Revelation tells us that Adam was the first man. There's no doubt about it for us. But you know for a fact who knew? Iblis. Iblis saw Adam. Not only did he see Adam, Iblis, who became Shaitan, because he refused to bow down to Adam, he failed the test. Um, he saw Abraham, Noah, <laughs> Moses, Isa. <laughs> You and I believe in them, though we haven't seen them. Iblis, Shaitan, he knows. He's not a Shaitan because he doesn't know. In fact, he's Shaitan because he does know. Think of what he said, you know, when Allah ordered him. Uh, Why didn't you bow down when I ordered you to? Ana khairu minhu. I am better than him. You created me of fire, and him you created of mud. So uh, Iblis, who became Shaitan, he failed, and he doesn't not he doesn't not know Allah. Call a Rabbi, my Lord. Give me time until the day of their raise raise up. They know he knows, he knows he's gonna you know the day. There's going to be resurrection. He, he doesn't not know that. He knows it. And he tells us not to believe. But he knows it. I'll tell you something different. When you get a chance, look at Muslim Hadith and Kitab Iman in the Book of Faith. Um, he, whenever uh, the son of Adam or the children of Adam reads a verse in Quran where we should make sujood, prostration, and they prostrate, shaitan runs away crying in seclusion and say, woe is with me. They were given, the children of Adam was given a commandment to, to prostrate and they prostrated for, la, for, la, for la who? Jannah. For him, for them, Jannah. And I was given a commandment and I disobeyed what, 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 for, for me and nar. He knows. He knows his, def his destination. So Iblis, because of his arrogance, he, he failed to, to, uh, to bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so when you read those things, Iblis, you know, he said, my Lord, you know, give me respite. And, and in fact, that was the worst supplication anyone ever made. You know, so uh, Iblis, Shaitan, he failed the test. So we now, we likewise are tested. We're tested every day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants to know what, what we are. Even in this life, people are tested. You know, last year in the United States, over 10 million people were arrested. 10 million people. Over 5 million people were arrested for stealing. Stealing. So we are tested in a lot of ways. One of the ways, in fact, um, uh, for Muslims, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Inna li kuli ummatin fitna, wa fitna tu ummatil mal. Um, every nation has a test, and the test of my ummah is wealth. How so? You look around the world, you look how many Muslims are suffering. There are probably like some 70 million refugees around the world, 60% of them are Muslims. Look at the disgrace that's happening in Yemen for Muslims, one of the worst um, states of affairs in the entire world, perhaps the worst. Um, Yemen, look at Syria, look at Palestine, look all over the Muslim world and you have people suffering. And we have organizations like Helping Hand and Relief and Development. We have um, an organization like Pure Hands, and they're doing magnificent work, Islamic Relief, um, United Relief, all of these organizations, these organizations from the United States and there's others around the world that are doing a, doing a tremendous work uh, raising money um, for these refugees, um, the Rohingya Muslims, Muslims in China, all over the world. Now, we're tested. Um, this is a big test. This coronavirus, is no, there's no joke. It's a very serious test. But you know, you have to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and I'm going to tell you that, that inshallah, we will survive it. Um, there'll be a cure for um, this disease. 
Iman, why should you why you why are you so sure? Say inshallah. I'm saying inshallah. The only reason I'm saying it because what the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Ma anzalallah da'in illa anzaluhu shafa'il. Um, there is no disease without a cure. So, alhamdulillah, there's going to be a cure. You know, Ma'awiyah, he said, one of the companions of the Prophet, he says, um, La hakima illa dhul tajibah. There's no real wisdom without experience. That word dhul tajibah has two meanings. Number one, it can mean um, um, experience. No one is wise without experience. And the other meaning is experimentation, experiment. And and you will find out scientists they learn many things by experimenting. That's what they what they do. So they will experiment and and they will find the cure, inshallah, for this and, and whatever disease there is, there's always gonna be a cure. So this world is temporary. And and you as as a believer have to see that and have to understand that that this is not the real world. And this is why the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Adunya Sidinu Limutman Janatu Kafir. This world is a prison for the Muslims. A lot of things we can't do. It's a prison for the Muslims, but it is a paradise for the disbelievers. Disbelievers get their paradise now. This is not paradise for us. No, 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 no. In fact, um, let me tell you something. In, in trying to understand this life, you know, there was a German philosopher named Arthur Schopenhauer. He's called the... Um, He's called the philosopher of pessimism. He said, life is an endless pain with a painful end. You know, and I feel sorry for people who don't believe in life after death. Every prophet taught the afterlife, al-akhirah. Everyone, this is part of faith, to believe in the hereafter. And for some people that they don't believe in the hereafter, this life is misery. If you don't believe in the hereafter, it doesn't make sense. I think every once in a while, artists embedded in their artwork is their philosophy of life. Whether it's a novel, a short story, a movie, a song, a poetry, in it, if you listen to it carefully, is their philosophy of life. And I'm going to give you an example of a man that you probably heard of, Shakespeare. And if you read Shakespeare's Macbeth, and listen, Macbeth's wife just died. And he's feeling really sad. And I want you to listen to what he said. And remember, though it's Macbeth, it's really Shakespeare. Life's but a walking shadow of a poor play that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and is heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. What? A tale told by an idiot? Full of sound and fury signifying nothing? Are you crazy? But you know what? I agree with Macbeth. I agree with Shakespeare. If there is no life after death. And this is why the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Allahumma la aisha illa aishul akhirah. Oh Allah, there's no life except the life of the hereafter. If there's no hereafter, brothers and sisters, this life doesn't make sense. What you live, you live to be 65 years old, 75 years old, even 100 years old, and then you die, your mother die, your father die, your husband die, your wife die, your children die, your grandparents die, your imams die, your leaders die, the scholars. What is the point? What's the point? You live for what? Where's the justice? All the bad people that lived and stole. Where, where's the justice for all the poor people? But you know what? Faith is the difference. You know, um, let me tell you something. And again, I believe it because the Prophet said it. Peace and blessing be upon him. He said, إِذَا دَحَلَ الْأَحْلُ الْجَنَّةِ يُنَادِ مُنَادٍ إِنَّ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَحْيَا فَلَا تَمُوتُ أَبَدًا And when... The people of Jannah will enter Jannah. A caller will call out and say, for you to live and never die. No cemeteries in, in, in heaven, in Jannah. No, you don't die. It's for you to be healthy and never get sick again. Look at all these hospitals around the world filled up right now with, with COVID-19. There's no hospitals in Jannah. You don't get sick in Jannah. 
And let me tell you another thing that don't happen. You know, listen, say what you want to say. Everybody, if you live long enough, you're going to grow old. Now, I don't know by personal experience. They tell me that. <laughs> but that's that's what it is. People looking for the fountain of youth. You don't find the fountain of youth here. And when you enter gender, no more aging. Enter shibu. You be young and never grow old again. Never have difficulty again in gender. And you have to believe in that so that we are... We are tested, we're going to be tested every day. And um, and please, please pass the test. And alhamdulillah, at least we know from the Quran what we're supposed to do. We have guidance. And we know from the hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, what we're going to do. We're tested every day. And the main thing, you got to be patient. I've come to the conclusion after all these years of being Muslims, you know, I was in the um, third grade and I learned a song. I was in the third grade and I still remember it now. Would you like for me to sing it for you? I'm sure you would, but it's not going to happen. So let me tell you what the song says, something like this. Um, getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. And really, I've come to the conclusion that everything is about getting to know Allah. Really, that's the key. And all of this life is just to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and how to live this life, how blessed you are as Muslims. I remember the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, once said um, that Allah said, Ya ibadi kulukun dolun illa man hadaytu fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my slaves, every one of you are misguided unless I guide you. Therefore, ask me and I will guide you. Why is it 17 times a day a Muslim say, Ihdina sarat al-mustaqeem. Guide us to the straight path. Because you know what? We won't, we'll be lost without guidance. Al-Huda, the Quran is a book of guidance. Allah is Al-Hadi. He's the one that, that guides. So we, brothers and sisters, have to pass the test. The tests are going to come in many ways. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you and give us the strength to pass the test. The key is Iman. And the Prophet said, Al-mu'minu qawiyyu khayrun wa habu illallah min al-mu'mini da'ifan wa fiqulin khayrin. A strong believer is better and more loved by Allah than a weak believer, though there's good in all of them. So let us try our best to learn. And the key is, the key, and you go to a doctor, almost every doctor will tell you the same thing. Exercise and diet. Diet and exercise. Eating the right food and exercise. That's the key. You have to stay on a steady, steady diet of Quran and Sunnah. That's pure. You want to know what to do, when to do it. And then the exercise, and there's plenty of exercise. Salat, one of the gates of Jannah, Babu Salat, making your Salat. And remembering Allah. You know, um, um, there are a lot of verses in Quran, what the Arabs called Jumlatul Shartiyah, which is a conditional sentence. Uh, if you help in Allah's cause, Allah will help you. Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. So that's what it's all about. It's about remembrance of Allah. In Aisha radiallahu anha, she gave us a hint about her husband, the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yathkurullah ala kuli ahyani. And the Messenger of Allah remembered Allah in every circumstance. And if the Prophet is remembering Allah in every circumstance, that means Allah is remembering him. So my beloved brothers and sisters in London, I take my leave from you. Uh, I love you. Um, and, and why do I love you? Some of you um, I know, like Brother Kidra. Some of you I know. Some of you I know when I see you. Many of you I don't I don't know. 
but I love you. Why? Because the Prophet said, لَتَدْقُلُوا جَنَّةِ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَبُوا You never go to Jannah until you believe and you will never believe until you love one another. I don't love you because I know you. He said, yeah, Allah will ask in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, أَيْنَ مُتَحَبُونَ بِجَلَالِ We are those who love one another for my glory. Just loving someone, another Muslim for Allah's glory is enough to get blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be shaded by Allah on a day when there's no shade except his shade. To my youngsters, please do not abandon your faith. You're going to be tested a lot of ways, especially as the youth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless the communities, um, East London Masjid and the London Muslim Center um, for all the great work that you do. May Allah continue to bless you. And I'm sorry to speak to you for just a few minutes and I take my leave, my leave from you, hoping that in the near future I'll see you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.